Pastor and best-selling author Max Lucado and his daughter Andrea have a new book to help preteens process their worries, deal with anxiety, and really rely on God's faithfulness. It's called Anxious for Nothing for Young Readers Living Above Anxiety and Loneliness. Welcome to the Wednesday Bookmark, Max. Hi. Hi, thank you so much. You're really, really kind to, to let me be a part of the conversation. Well, real quick, if there's a way to answer this in a brief way, why did you decide to write this book with your daughter, first of all? Well, if you if you ever got to meet my daughter, you'd understand. She's a better writer than her dad, for one thing, a much better thinker than her dad. Mm-hmm. Um, the book itself, Anxious for Nothing, uh, came out in the uh, adult form about four years ago, <clears throat> and it really resonated. We came to understand and learn a lot about uh helping people deal with with anxiety. Uh, And then uh, we we began getting responses and feedback uh, from people asking, well, how can I help my kids? Because parents were uh, picking up on what now we can empirically prove. And that is, this is the most anxiety ridden generation. Uh, Well, since anxiety has been measured. Uh, One Mm -hmm. statistic just came out about three or four weeks ago. It said that 91% of, of people born since 1996, 91% are dealing with some level of, of depression. That's just a staggering statistic. I still can't get my mind around that. Uh, but it's, it's just a, it's a tough time to be a, a young person. So we're really grateful that we had this material. My daughter took this material. My daughter's 35, her dad's 66. So she could do a much better job at taking it and, and, and recasting it uh, in a language that uh, the, the middle schooler, high schooler, even young college age might appreciate. That's good. Well, I mean, you mentioned why this is a good time right now to have a book like this that also pulls from your uh, You Are Never Alone book as well. Now, fear and anxiety, I feel like they're always bundled together, but they're actually not the same, are they? What's the difference between anxiety and fear? Yeah, and and, and you're right. It it is a bit, you know, we choose the term that we want. It seems to me that a good working term is uh, uh, anxiety is fear on steroids or fear that just won't go away. Uh, Fear is the alarm system that tells us there's an intruder. Uh, anxiety is alarm system that never goes off. It's just living in a state of edge. And it's often uh, manifests itself in a person who uh, the big word is catastrophize. You know, they're, they're, mm. they're assuming something bad is going to happen. Uh, a person who really struggles with, uh, with sleep or resting. A person who has trouble trusting uh, that a person truly believes in them or, or cares about them, uh, a person who uh, uh, is usually negative or seeing the glasses half full. Uh, th- these are just a few of the of the characteristics, especially of, of young people who are wrestling with with this emotion. And and I would encourage parents to remember it is just that it's just an emotion. It's an emotion. It's not a sin. It's not a sickness. It's not something that can't be helped. Uh, Sometimes it requires uh, counseling. Sometimes anxiety will require some type of uh, pharmaceutical assistance. Uh, That doesn't mean that you or your child is a second rate citizen. That's Mm -hmm. just, it's just the world we live in. So if that's you, please don't beat yourself up. Uh, Whether or not that's you, all of us could benefit from a good helping a dose of Philippians 4. You know, Philippians 4, that passage, be anxious for nothing, is the most underlined verse in the whole Bible. And, and, okay. and, and we know that, you know, because now, uh, you know, the electronic tools can tell us what's being underlined. And so I think the whole world is looking for some help in this area of anxiety. Wow. Can you explain the acronym in the book CALM, C-A-L-M? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a preacher, and so I always try to find some way to help us remember things. And so years ago, I came up with this acronym from based on Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Number one is C, or C, the first letter is C, or celebrate God. The Apostle Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. What he's saying there is make a big deal out of God. When you're in your midst of your struggles, rather than make a big deal out of your struggles, lift up your eyes, make a big deal out of God. A is ask, ask God for help. 
that well-known scripture, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So rather than give in to prayer, to despair, choose prayer, be quick to pray, be quick to pray. And then L, leave your concerns with God. So we celebrate God, we ask for help, then L, we leave our concerns with him. And this is suggested in that little phrase, with thanksgiving, when the Apostle Paul says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. So you see, the thankful heart and the, gra- great, uh, the, the anxious heart are never the same. When mm-hmm. gratitude comes in, anxiety goes out. And so uh, let, treat your prayers, your concerns with prayers and then gratitude. And then lastly, the M is meditate. Meditate on good things. And there the apostle gives us that list. I think it's of nine different things to meditate on. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is good. Meditate on these things. In other words, don't focus so much on, on the things that are, that are destructive and negative. Focus on the things that are good. I think here's where parents can really help their kids. They need to help their kids understand that just because they have a thought, they don't have to think it. These thoughts come in our, our world, but we, we don't have to invite them in. And also here's where it gets in, you know, in the dirty, dirty of, 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 of managing what our kids watch. Uh, managing how much time they spend on their phones, managing how much time they spend uh, watching certain movies. We adults need that as well, but especially young people whose minds are still being shaped and whose opinions are still being shaped. Uh, parents, we have to we have to get involved in this part of our children's lives as well. Mm, so good. Well, you already covered some practical ways to relieve anxiety and worry. There's more in the book, but I do want you to maybe just share a few of those 10 ways to choose happy thoughts when we're feeling anxious. Can you leave us with a few of those? I sure can. This was, this was Andrea, my daughter's uh, contribution. Uh, mm-hmm. Really some great ideas. Write, write in a gratitude journal, memorize Bible verses, Sing or listen to worship songs. I've been blessed with a wife who does this. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, you know that great song, Care, that came out during the pandemic, the blessing song? Mm-hmm. And, and p- countries all over the world, cities were, you know, creating a blessing song for London, for Philadelphia. Did you see any of those? I did. Powerful. Oh, oh beautiful. Uni- unifying, right? Yeah. Unifying. I came in one day and my wife had her hands over a picture that had a picture of our three daughters. And she was just weeping, singing that song. She thought I wasn't home. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I, not that I, 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 she didn't care that I saw her, but that's the kind of wife that I have. You know, moms do that. Just invite mm-hmm. spiritual blessings to come down on your kids through worship. Spend time with encouraging people. Write positive comments on your friend's social media posts. Always say thank you to someone. Take a nature walk, do a favor for someone, tell someone how much they mean to you. And I like this one. Give yourself a compliment. We need that. All right. Lastly, you know, I know you mentioned just the the rate of young people who are experiencing depression and anxiety and and worry. And I'll throw fear in there, too. Um, But we do know, obviously, too, that the levels of of these things have risen dramatically among children and teenagers since the start of COVID. Right. So I have a question for you just in your experience counseling people. Like, do you think that it's going to be hard to go back, like to bounce back from this? Are we going to just... Is worry going to just be the automatic response moving forward for young people? Like, give us some hope. Leave us with a little bit of hope here. Well, I do. I do think it's going to be a challenge. Uh, I believe that we've uh, experienced in this global pandemic uh, a global trauma. We've just been traumatized, and the things that we used to turn to for strength, like I don't know, you know, singing in the choir uh, or, or, or playing in a sport. Uh, we, we were disconnected from. So it's, it's going to take some time. However, our God is still on the throne. We have weathered mm-hmm. storms before. Uh, the Bible is full of the Joseph who led the nation through the famine, Esther who led the nation through the, uh, in, through, through, through the mass, threatened mass killing of, of the Israelites. And so one story after another, our, our, our God's still on the throne. And I believe that we were created for such a time as this. This is our hour. 
So moms and dads, let's just keep praying, keep the knees bent, keep the eyes up, uh, keep the heart soft, and our good God is going to get us through this. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Well, again, it is anxious for nothing for young readers living above anxiety and loneliness. Max Lucado, written with his his own daughter, Andrea. Max, awesome. Really appreciate you bringing this content, this resource back to this generation. Thank you. Thank you, Care. So it's great, great to talk to you. All the very best. <laughs>